Yeah, what we've learned is that the cytokine storm that can happen in COVID uh, is very similar to what we've studied in cancer, that uh, immune cells in our body can stimulate these pro-inflammatory cytokines. And uh, they can be from macrophages and neutrophils, and they can be released throughout the body. And they can affect the brain, they can affect the heart, they can affect muscle. And we've studied these cytokines mainly in cancer, and they can cause the cancer to grow and spread through the body, which is what we call metastasis. They can cause cancers to induce muscle wasting, which is what we call cachexia, cancer cachexia. And those mechanisms of how the inflammatory cytokines spread throughout the body through the immune cells is very similar to what happens in COVID. And that's where originally when the cytokine storm was first documented in Wuhan, actually went in China, in the first several seminal publications, we noticed that the cytokine storm was very similar to what we study in cancer. And that's where we were very interested in the resolution of inflammation because when you have multiple pro-inflammatory cytokines, standard anti-inflammatory drugs will not work because those drugs will mainly block one or two cytokines and uh, the whole process of resolution of inflammation is very powerful because it blocks a series of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Yeah, so there are certain cytokines such as TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6 that are similar in both the COVID-19 and the cancer where these inflammatory cytokines will go up. Um, in cancer, sometimes what we see is after surgery or chemotherapy or radiation, these cytokines will especially go up as opposed to a patient who has a baseline cancer before they have the therapy. Uh, that's one of the differences um, with COVID-19 where just somebody who has systemic COVID-19, especially a flare-up and is in the, for example, in the hospital where those cytokines can go up on their own from the immune cells. While in cancer, it's more after a particular therapy like that, especially therapies that kill the cancer cells, which is what chemotherapy and radiation, they kill the cancer cells. And surgery can also kill cancer cells. And even immune therapy, which won the Nobel Prize in 2018, can indirectly induce cell death. So whenever we have cancer therapies that induce cell death, that can cause a cytokine storm. And um, that's where that can disrupt the resolution of inflammation. So that's a process in the body where if you're having a cancer and you have surgery or chemotherapy or radiation, which are standard therapies that pretty much all cancer patients undergo at least one or two, sometimes all three of these therapies that can induce the uh, disruption of the resolution inflammation. And um, that's why we were very interested in the specialized pro-resolving mediators because they'll restore that natural resolution of inflammation and downregulate the cytokine storm. Yeah, so we've studied, we and others now have studied multiple cancer models in the lab and uh, we've studied pancreatic cancer, brain cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, and in all these models the SPMs can reduce the tumor size. And what's especially important is that they can inhibit the cancer spread, which is what we call metastasis. So 90% of cancer patients will die from the spread of cancer. They don't die from the primary tumor. Um, they'll die from the spread of cancer, which is what we call metastasis. And what we showed in our 2018 Journal of Experimental Medicine publication is that the SPMs, for example, the resolvents could inhibit uh, melanoma metastasis, and it could, they, the SPMs could inhibit lung metastasis. So that was very exciting because cancer patients, especially advanced stage cancer patients like stage two, three, and four, they present with metastatic disease. So um, the fact that the SPMs could inhibit that metastasis was very exciting. 
the standard therapies such as chemotherapy, um, radiation can actually stimulate metastasis uh, in a subset of patients. So the problem is we don't know which of the patients that the cancer will be stimulated by chemotherapy and radiation, and there are other patients that these therapies can benefit. But in a subset of patients where these therapies such as chemotherapy, radiation, so even surgery can stimulate metastasis, we mimic that in different models in the lab. And we had a very high profile publication in 2019 in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, and we used surgery stimulated metastasis models and chemotherapy stimulated metastasis models where the animals will die uh, not only from the cancer, but the spread of the cancer, and then the surgery or the chemotherapy will make the metastasis worse. But when we gave these animals our SPM, it could be resolved in D3, resolve in D4, resolve in D5 in this particular publication, that we could prevent that chemotherapy-induced metastasis. And that was very exciting. So uh, we, in a subset of mice, uh, we could uh, prolong lifespan in, a, in an animal to over a year, where normally these animals would die of their metastasis in two, three weeks. So focusing on the surgery-stimulated metastasis and the chemotherapy-stimulated metastasis, we could show by stimulating the resolution of inflammation we could prevent that cancer therapy-induced metastasis. And that's very relevant because, as I was saying, that most cancer patients will either get surgery or they'll get a combination of surgery and chemotherapy and radiation. And some cancer patients, if the tumor is too big and the surgeon can't remove it or it's um, met metastatic, has spread throughout the body, we try to do uh, chemo radiation for example, in pancreatic cancer, where the oncologist will give chemotherapy and radiation and try to shrink the tumor to allow the surgeon to operate on it. So what we found is in these animal experiments, if we pre-fed um, the mice with a, an SPM or we give it uh, systemically to the animal, that we could shrink the tumor and then allow uh, for surgery and, and try to cure the cancer.